Yeah, I mean, you know, look, I mean, that that team and, you know, the next year's Duke team and with Bobby and Christian and all of us, like, I think we acknowledge now that that was a great team mm-hmm. and, and, and maybe one of the best teams, at least in the modern era, um, or maybe the best, depending on who's voting. But, um, <laughs> but you know, I, I think prior to that, like, I, I don't think people appreciate just how dominant UNLV was. And like there was a, you know, there were those who thought they could win in the NBA. I mean, they were just that good, that dominant, uh, yeah. that intimidating. Impossible, but I, I understand what people. No, it's impossible. I mean, it's, it is impossible. Knowing what no we chance. know now, yeah, it's zero chance. <laughs> there was an eighteen-year-old, like you know, and, and like I mean, it was just like this team is incredible. Yeah, and uh, and one of the great college teams to not win a championship, mm-hmm. you know you know, of all time. So, um, so, you know, I think a couple things were different this time around. One, um, Grant Hill was on the team. We had, well, <laughs> look at that. Um, <laughs> you know, we had a week to prepare. Uh-huh. Uh, unlike the year before where you essentially had a day. Right. You know, you know, you don't, you don't really get a whole lot accomplished on that Sunday at a final four. Yeah. You play yeah. late, late the night before. You have media requests. You're trying mm-hmm. to. You can't practice. You can't do anything. You know, it's just it's a it's a quick turnaround. So we had a whole week to prepare. We watched film. You know, coach. We ran to the fire. You know, we went back and we looked at the film. Mm-hmm. Um, and we game plan. I remember at one point we we practiced against seven. It was five against seven. Oh, really? Wow. And because uh, they were so long and athletic and had great speed uh and so going against seven was chaotic um but at the end of the day like we truly believed that we were going to win and we felt obviously the pressure was on them yeah absolutely you know and um they had not been in a close game all season you know, we had been in all types of close games. I mean, we, mm-hmm. we won some, we lost some. Uh, we practiced in the game situations all the time. I don't know if you guys did that. Oh, yeah. We did it all the time. Yeah. We would have days where it was just game situation stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just, you know, five-minute scrimmage, ten-minute scrimmage, and then, you know, one minute down three or yeah. Yeah. 40 seconds up to what are you like, what are we doing? So, yeah. Definitely did that stuff. So for us, it was just, you know, if we can, you know, we can come out and hit them early and mm. let them know that this is not last year uh, and keep it close, then the, then this, the pressure is really going to be on them. Mm-hmm. And and then I think one of, the, you know, you mentioned it, so I'll speak on it. But I think with, with, with having me, like, like I was the backup point guard. You know, mm-hmm. I was the backup point guard of Bobby, but I was the starting power forward. And so... You know, that great team the year before with Allah and Bricky and, and, and Phil Henderson, um, you know, they, they weren't ball handlers. Mm-hmm. You know, Bobby was the, the, the primary ball handler and really the only ball handler. And, and so I think I was, I, I kind of served as a bit of a pressure release. Yeah. Where yeah. I was able to like, you know, early in the game, I'm bringing the ball up and Larry Johnson's guarding me, which, you know, I felt like I had the advantage. You're out yeah. here on the perimeter now. This is yeah, great. it takes him out of his comfort zone. Yeah, it takes him a little bit out of his comfort zone. And so even, even now as I'm saying this, like we were kind of positionless basketball, even mm-hmm. that team, before that became a thing. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, I'm a power forward, I'm, I'm a backup point guard. Leitner was a big guy who was one of the first big guys to go out on the perimeter, you know, mix it up inside. Yeah. And so it, it was it was a different team, I think, our versatility. Uh, and then I think we just had a collective grit and toughness about us, uh, having gone through that, you know, that that game the year before, but then also the season prior to the final four. So, you know, we were confident. We might have been the only people in the country. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure probably were. <laughs> I'll tell you this funny story. So we're at the airport hotel. Um, that's where we were staying. It might've been a holiday Inn or something. And the Friday beforehand, somehow we were in downtown Indianapolis. Maybe we went to dinner and coach gave us some time to wander around. And there was a mall there in downtown uh, Indianapolis. 
and they had like this karaoke um, studio in the mall by the food court. So me and Brian Davis and um, Tony Lang, um, we go in there. I think Mark Williams, who was a manager, we go in there and we, um, we end up singing uh, Prince 1999. And uh, so we go in the recording booth and we sing it. You know, they didn't have a great selection. So you had to take what they had. Yeah. So then you could go next door and record a video, a music video. So we go in there and we record it and we're dancing and acting silly or whatever, whatever. And so we go back to the hotel and we have the tape of the video. And this is the Friday night before the game. So we go to Tony, we go to Tony's parents room, Tony Lang. And Tony's dad, uh, Mr. Lang, would bring a VCR on the road. Uh, and he would always take the games mm -hmm. in his room. He'd set it up on timer. And then the parents would all go back and watch the game, you know, until the next game. Yeah. He also would, would, would you know, record the, the movies in the hotel room. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was but uh, so we go back to the room. And I remember all the parents gathered. Now, the parents, you know, I've learned since then. They're a nervous wreck. Like they're mm -hmm. thinking, there's no way that, you know, we're gonna beat Vegas. Yeah. And my parents have told me this since then. And uh, so we go in the room, we put the tape in, and, and we're la and we're, you know, we're watching the tape and we're silly, we're dancing, we're doing this. And like if you looked around the room and the parents were just like, oh, we have no chance tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> We have no chance. Like, you know, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like they're looking around like, you got to go on Stacey Ogden tomorrow and y'all out here making Prince <laughs> music videos before the game? Like, oh, yeah. like, no chance. You yeah, know? And my daddy, funny. My dad even has said that he was, in that moment, he was thinking, okay, like, like what kind of, like, talk am I going to have with, with <laughs> my son to try to pick him up after the loss tomorrow? Yeah. Um, <laughs> But you know, I guess we were we were relaxed and we were confident, and um, you know, and thankfully we 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 played well and and, and you know and, and were able to get that win. Yeah, that's funny because I don't know. I almost would rather would rather y'all have been you know in that state. Like if I'm you know having been in like high pressure situations and things like that, you you want your team to be relaxed and free flowing and, you know, not have that pressure. I know you mentioned it earlier, like the pressure is all on UNLV and it is um, because they have all the expectation, right? They, have, you know, they're coming in undefeated. They won it all last year. Uh, you beat this team by 30 last year. So all the expectations is on their shoulder. Um, and then, like you said, they hadn't played any close games. So, you know, how do they react when there's a little bit of game pressure on them? Um, but yeah, that, that is a, <laughs> that's a really good story. <laughs> um, so then you do get into the game. It's a really good game. Um, you know, Bobby hits, you know, that big three, you guys end up winning. Um, it's the clip I uh, always remember, you know, you guys went in and celebrating and coaches like trying to calm everybody down. Um, so, you know, you guys come off this big high, um, you know, you beat the team that everybody thought was unbeatable, but you know, job's not finished. You got to win one more. How do you guys flip the script and turn, you know, get to the next thing? Um, and like you mentioned earlier, you know, you only got one day um, to get ready for Kansas um, in the national championship game. So how do you guys move on after having this big, you know, emotional victory on Saturday? Well, you know, it's a great question. It was tough. And, and one of the things, you know, coach talked about leading up to the final four was that very thing, like we're going to be Vegas. And then the hard part is going to be, you know, com completing the job, mm -hmm. you know, coming down from that, that incredible high and, and, and having the, the, the focus to be able to prepare for the next opponent. And, and one thing, you know, coach reminded me of this recent, I forgot about this, but, um, you know, he said that, you know, the game before us on that Saturday was Kansas Carolina. Mm -hmm. And we were in the tunnel. You know, it was 20 minutes between games. So like the team loses or wins. And then like, we're in, the, we're, we're coming out right away for later. Yeah. And so we were in the tunnel 
and you know in the in the, in the Hoosier Dome. And when Carolina lost, he brought us back in, and he talked to us, and he didn't want us to rationalize and have a built-in excuse now that Carolina lost. Like it's okay, mm-hmm. you know, because you know the pressure Duke Carolina and all that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Loses, it's okay if we lose. You know, right, they can right. go further than we did. So it, it, it and so. Um, and so that next day, we, we were not ready. <laughs> we were <laughs> and we showed up for practice. Matter of fact, I think, I think a couple of guys showed up to the bus and they had sombreros on. Yeah. That's, and, yeah, that's funny. I, it's funny you mentioned that because I was talked to Coach Amaker and he, yeah, he said some guys showed up to the bus the next day and was acting a little bit different. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think Bray, I think Mike Bray, who was an assistant, or maybe Tommy, like told him to like take him off, take yeah. him players. But like, and then we go to practice, and we're like kind of you know screwing around, and Coach leaves. Hey, you guys aren't ready, or maybe he kicked us out. I, I can't remember if he kicked us out or he left practice, but he chewed us out, and we, he might have left, and then like then we meet, mm-hmm. and we're like, all right, look, you know. And so then we go get him and, you know, but like we needed to like, things needed to be reset because we yes. were riding high. And, mm-hmm. and, 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 um, you know, I think of this year, I think of, you know, that great game Gonzaga versus uh, UCLA. Yeah. And, and I knew, I knew from, you know, having beat Vegas and just going through that, that, you know, that, that period as a freshman, it, it, you know, I knew that it was going to be hard for them to, to get up for for, for Baylor and, yeah. and give Baylor credit. They were amazing. They're a great team. They might have beat them under any other normal circumstances. Yeah, yeah but they were very good. When you have a, 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 an incredible moment like that, it's you know, it's hard to to to, to recover from that in a way. And so mm-hmm. um so he reset the focus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, you know, we um, you know, we got locked in and and you know, we went out there and I don't think we played great but we played well enough to, to win. Yeah. Um, and went pretty easily, I think. I mean, it was close a little bit down the stretch, but, um, but yeah, but that was hard. Like that, that we needed to be kicked out, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We weren't yeah we've, I, I remember getting kicked out of practice a few times. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he has like, you know, he, he has to get one or two in a year. Right. And it's funny. Cause by like, by like my senior year, I knew like, 10 minutes into practice, I was like, oh, we're getting kicked out today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I saw, I could see the signs. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, we're getting kicked out. It's just a matter of time at this point. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, and, um, and it's also some of the speeches too. Like you hear yeah. early on and you're like, wow. And then, you know, you, you or the motivational, you know, sort of uh, tactics that he might use. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I have some, you know, I won't get it, but I have some, some funny stories about, I'm like, yeah, he said that to Leitner two years ago. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. It to me. You know, it's okay. All right. I'll yeah. Yeah, thing. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. It's it's hilarious, man. We were like getting together at K Academy and talking to guys and going over stories. And I'm like, man, he did that same thing, <laughs> you know, 20 years ago, and he still, you know, he still did it. But I mean, hey, it works. He's it got, works. It he works. Got five uh, five banners hanging in the end zone, so it works. 